At the train station, a man suddenly collapses onto the tracks, and instead of helping, the people around him start taking photos with their phones. An old man, not as nimble as he once was, jumps down bravely and lifts the man, urging others to help. Finally, people put away their phones and together, they rescue the man from the tracks. Interestingly, the old man hesitates to leave the tracks, seemingly using the chaos as a chance to lie down and end his life. The crowd tries to persuade him to get up but he remains indifferent until he locks eyes with a young boy. Not wanting to traumatize the child, he hurriedly climbs back onto the platform just as the train is about to hit and without responding to the puzzled and accusatory stares he walks away alone. This wasn't his first suicide attempt. The old man named Ove has lost the will to live after the death of his beloved wife, and being laid off from a job he had dedicated 40 years to. He dresses in his wife's favorite blue suit, prepares himself meticulously, places a photo of his wife on the windowsill to face the sunlight and attempt suicide once again. As he stands on a stool with a noose around his neck waiting for death, the tranquility is shattered by noise from outside. It turns out, a new neighbor has moved in across the street, breaking the community rules by driving in recklessly. Ove angrily confronts them but then thinks better of it, considering he won't be around much longer anyway. He ends up directing the neighbor to park properly, only for them to smash into his mailbox. After a tirade of curses, Ove helps them park their car, too disinterested to respond to their gratitude and returns home to continue his suicide attempt. Just as he is about to put the noose around his neck, the neighbor's two daughters appear, disrupting his plan because he doesn't want them to witness such a scene. The next day, he visits his wife Sonia's grave as usual, brings her flowers and shares updates from the neighborhood, apologizing for not keeping a promise the day before. Returning home, Ove puts on the blue suit again, determined to end his life without interruptions, he draws the curtains. But just as he is about to hang himself, a knock at the door disrupts him. Angrily, he decides to give the visitor a piece of his mind. Opening the door, he finds the neighbor's children, who have brought him a treat as a thank you for his help the previous day. Afterward, the neighbor borrows his ladder to fix their house. Despite his gruff exterior, Ove can't help but assist others. After the neighbor leaves, he attempts suicide again, this time decisively kicking away the stool. It is said that a person's brain rapidly recalls life events just before death. Ove's mother passed away when he was very young, leaving him and his father to depend solely on each other. His father's quiet demeanor often scared him because he never showed his sorrow or openly expressed his love. One day while visiting his father at the railway, Ove nearly got crushed by a train. His father panicked finally embraced him, letting Ove feel the depth of his love for the first time. On the day Ove graduated from university, he proudly showed his father his excellent grades. His father, filled with joy, shared the news with his co-workers, but a speeding train turned this moment of happiness into one of sorrow. What was supposed to be the happiest day of Ove's life became the most painful. Suddenly the rope Ove was using to hang himself breaks and he crashes to the floor in anger. He then decides to attempt suicide by carbon monoxide poisoning connecting a hose to the car exhaust and directing it into the car through a window. As the car fills with exhaust fumes, Ove's memories drift back to the past. After his father's death, life was hard. Developers whose offers he had refused burned down his house, leaving him with nothing overnight. Fortunately, his father's company took him in, giving him his father's job maintaining the railways. Homeless, he slept on trains without hope or happiness, believing his life held no more promise. One morning, Ove wakes up to the sight of a pair of vintage red high heels. Sitting across from him is a radiant girl with a gentle and beautiful demeanor. Ove is captivated and deeply smitten. During a ticket inspection, Ove, penniless, is saved from an awkward situation by the girl Sonia who pays his fare. When they reach the station, Ove in his haste nearly forgets his luggage, but Sonia reminds him and he gratefully retrieves it. Their eyes meet, reluctant to part, but as the train whistle blows the train departs. Ove's heart is restless from that day on, taking the same train every day in hopes of seeing her again. Three weeks later, just when he's about to give up hope, he sees Sonia again. Seizing the moment, he invites her to dinner. Fortunately, Sonia accepts with a nod. Ove's world is small, consumed by work, and he's never dined in a fancy restaurant or mastered the art of conversation. On this significant first date, he awkwardly talks about railway maintenance, but Sonia listens intently, fascinated. Only at the end does she realize Ove has barely eaten, only sipped his soup. After a moment of reflection, Ove confesses he had eaten at home because he didn't have enough money to offer her the meal she deserved. He admits to lying about being a soldier and reveals he's just a train cleaner and that his house was burned down. Ove thought Sonia would despise him after learning the truth so he felt inferior and wanted to leave. However, his sincerity touched Sonia and they became a couple, embarking on a life together. Sonia's angelic tenderness healed his lonely soul, making his ordinary life colorful and rich. With Sonia's support and encouragement, Ove successfully passed the train driver's exam and built a warm new family. He considered his encounter with Sonia to be fortunate and cherished it dearly. As Ove dwelled on these memories, a series of urgent knocks on the door pulled him back from the brink of death once again. His suicide attempt failed, and he opened the garage door in frustration to find that his neighbor's husband had fallen and was taken to the hospital. The
The neighbor, unable to drive, sought Ove's help to get there and look after their mischievous children. Despite his complaints, Ove ended up babysitting the kids. He entertained them with stories, mimicking animal voices making them laugh. Returning from the hospital, Ove abandoned the idea of suicide at home and decided to lie on the railway tracks to end his life. As the train approached, he saw his younger self and remembered his father's tragic death by a train. Ashamed, he stepped off the tracks at the last moment. On his way home, a neighbor presented him with a painting where the colorful figure represented Ove. In the eyes of the children, Ove could have had a colorful life, but he was constantly moving towards a monochrome existence. Then, following a pitiful meow, they found an injured cat. The neighbor suggested Ove adopt the cat, as he couldn't keep it due to his daughter's allergies. Initially reluctant, Ove agreed to take in the cat. From that day on, the cat became Ove's companion, and he even apologized to his wife's grave, promising to join her after settling the cat. Later, the neighbor asked Ove to look after the kids while she went to learn driving and handle her husband's discharge. Ove protested but ended up spending a warm day with the children, gradually becoming part of the neighbor's family. Perhaps the children awakened his gentler side, transforming Ove from a quirky old man to a beloved grandfather figure. For the first time since his wife's death he felt the meaning of life yet he couldn't shake off the thought of suicide. He contemplated ending his life with a shotgun but hesitated. Then the doorbell rang again. This time it was students taught by his late wife seeking accommodation for their internship. Ove considered refusing but then thought of what his wife would have done and decided to welcome them. The next day Ove prepared breakfast for them, fixed their bicycles and gained two new friends. At that moment, Ove started to realize the increasing bonds around him, making the path to suicide seemingly impossible. On a bright sunny afternoon, Ove found himself thinking of his wife again. He felt as if she had been protecting him from beyond, always finding ways to keep him alive. The warm sunlight felt like her gentle touch on his heart. Ove talked to his wife every day and finally abandoned the thought of suicide, deciding to pick up the pieces and find hope in life again. He opened up to his neighbor, sharing his most painful memories. They had planned a spontaneous trip to celebrate Sonia's pregnancy, opting for a bus ride to save money and enjoy the scenery. However, the bus tragically fell off a cliff due to the driver's reckless speed. Ove, waking up amidst the chaos, desperately searched for Sonia and eventually found her barely alive among the wreckage. Miraculously, Sonia survived but was left permanently disabled, and they lost their unborn child, unable to have any more children. This devastating news crushed Ove, who felt life was unfairly taking everything he cherished. Yet Sonia's optimism and encouragement inspired Ove to persevere. She told him you either die or find a way to live well. Motivated by her words, Ove customized a comfortable wheelchair for Sonia, removed all the thresholds and steps at home, and adjusted cabinets and desks to her height, enabling her to pursue her dream of becoming a teacher. After much effort, Sonia earned her teaching degree, but her disability made finding a job challenging. Eventually, a principal recognized her value, despite the school lacking accessibility for disabled people. To ensure his wife could work, Ove built a special access ramp for her overnight in the rain, showcasing their love and Sonia's resilience to the school. This act earned Sonia special consideration and a position in one of the best classes. Although Sonia lost her biological child, she found herself surrounded by countless children at school. They hoped to spend their lives together, but five months prior cancer took Sonia away from Ove. Hearing his story, the neighbor was moved to tears and offered sincere comfort. In the days that followed, Ove led a simple content life. He was never alone with a cat by his side, grandchildren who adored him and friends who needed him. He rediscovered the value of life in its vibrant colors. When the neighbor's third child was born, Ove held the baby tenderly, filling the void of not having his own children. Years later on a snowy morning, the neighbor noticed Ove's door unshoveled, unusual for him. Sensing something was wrong, she found Ove peacefully lying in bed having passed away naturally from organ failure, not by his own hand. Ove left a will requesting a modest funeral, attended only by those who understood him. However, the church was filled with people who, though not related by blood, were like family to him. As sunlight streamed through the window, Ove found himself back on the train where he first met Sonia. Opening his eyes, he saw the familiar vintage high heels. Sitting up, he finally saw Sonia just as he remembered her, tears of joy filling his eyes. Sonia reached out her hand and Ove as always knew just how to hold it. They were together again, never to be parted. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this.